In this video, you will learn how huge cockroaches get into the diet of small wasps, how insects hunt from the siege, and meet many other hunters from the insect world. Be sure to watch the video all the way to the end, and yep, let's go. You would hardly even pay attention to an adult antlion. It looks a bit like a lazy dragonfly that just kind of flies leisurely back and forth, occasionally eating someone. And that's only if someone gets in its way. An antlion larva is quite another matter. Oh, that's a creature from your nightmares. It seems like it might be what the creators of Star Wars were inspired by when they came up with Sarlacc. See for yourself. An antlion lives inside a sand funnel and eats anyone who accidentally falls into it. But before it eats an accidental victim, the antlion hides in the sand and waits, only exposing its sickle-like jaws. As soon as the sand under the paws of any insect shake even a little, the hidden hunter attacks. A huge amount of sand flies into the victim, and if that seems like nothing to you, remember the dimensions. Sand's like rocks to ants. The knockdown victim collapses to the bottom. The predator's sickle jaws lock onto its body, the end. The seized prey is sucked into the sand, and the insatiable predator devours it. Small beetles and butterflies, caterpillars, ants, and other insects become victims of the antlion. Eventually, after having eaten enough, the larva transforms into an adult and frankly becomes like a school bully who then turns into a harmless loser. Nothing personal, buddy. Of course, no list of cool hunters from the insect world can do without spiders. There are several species of spiders, which not only wait when the potential dinner is caught in their sticky net, they literally sit in ambush in order to rush on the victim at the right moment. Oh, oh my god, oh my god, shit. oh my god, it's right there, it's underneath. Some spiders live in pipes, while others dig deep burrows and then cover the entrances with sort of a hatch made of soil, plants, and spider webs. It blends into the background and stays closed, or ajar most of the time, until an insect, which is on the spider's menu, is nearby. Then it jumps out at high speed, grabs its prey, and drags it back to its burrow to share with its family. And all this in a fraction of a second. By the way, the females of such spiders spend their whole lives in burrows and can live up to 20 years. Males, as usual, aren't lucky. They have to wander in search of females, and this of course doesn't contribute to a long life. And you know what else doesn't contribute to a long life? When something jumps out at you out of a hole, damn it. <laughs> Honestly, it's just a living screamer. However, not only spiders with hatches know how to cleverly hide the entrance to their dwellings, tree ants of the cephalotus species don't ambush anyone. But back to the hunters, because next up, caterpillars. Most of them feed on leaves, meaning they are considered herbivores, but not this one. The Hawaiian Eupithecia caterpillar eats other living things. It's probably because of the isolation of Hawaii. There were no insect predators here early on, so the niche was occupied by Eupithecia. However, in order to get its own food, it had to get clever and evolve. Its hind legs have changed so that the caterpillar can cling to the edge or median veins of leaves, twigs, and other surfaces. On the other hand, the forelegs have evolved to grab and hold its prey. The caterpillar stays as still as a branch or stalk and waits for insects to come within striking distance, and then it needs only a momentary attack. And there, one insect is already devouring the other with an appetite. Disguise is of course really cool, but what about real zombies? I'm not kidding. The ones that are no longer alive, but not yet dead. It does happen in the wild world, and the emerald cockroach wasp is responsible for the zombification. This is a very beautiful, yet incredibly deadly insect that could very well be the hero of a horror movie, if it were bigger. Emerald wasps rarely grow larger than two centimeters, but they prey on cockroaches, which are much larger. Fighting them in a fair fight is simply unrealistic, so the wasps do things differently and zombify the enemy. A couple of bites is enough to partially paralyze the victim, but so that it retains the ability to move only under control. Then all is really easy. The wasp takes the cockroach by its antenna and leads it to its burrow. Robin, take it. He's yours. Right. There it lays eggs on its abdomen and leaves it there for a while. The emerging larva use the cockroach as food, pupates, and then the adult wasp gets out. The cycle repeats. Another beautiful and frightening hunter in their own way are the predatory fireflies that live in the tropical forests of Peru, or rather, glowing larvae, ready to devour anything that comes close enough. 
Attracted by their light, they burrow into the mud, sticking out only their heads and huge jaws to make a dash at the right moment to grab their prey. Scientists have determined that the larvae can control weather and how brightly they emit light. It all depends on the circumstances. For a potential dinner, you can shine a lot. But if there's a predator or some meticulous person nearby, it's better to just turn it off and hide. What about the creature which is called the assassin bug? Okay, that's something I just couldn't miss, especially since the name is absolutely justified. These little predators are almost everywhere, and if insects could feel fear, they would definitely freak out at the mere mention of the assassin bug. Well, it'd seem, well, what's wrong with them? Funny bugs? Long nose? Oh, it's not just a nose, but a formidable weapon and feeding device at the same time. The assassin bugs are the masters of stealthy killing in the insect world. They ambush and then kill unsuspecting victims and drink their liquid viscera by piercing soft tissue with their sharp beaks. Or rather, first the beetles inject the digestive secret into their prey, and after its entrails have been turned into nutritious soup, the assassin bug sucks up the victim's contents without thinking whether it's still alive or not. Everything happens very quickly, ruthlessly, and extremely professionally. However, not all assassin bugs feed on insects. Some having just appeared in the world gladly drink the blood of bats, and some assassin bugs even feed on humans. It's a good thing you can't suck a human dry. At least someone so small can't do that. They don't hunt in groups, do they? Do they? Seriously, guys? As you've learned by now, some insects don't acquire their hunting skills as adults. Some manage to become dangerous hunters as soon as they're born. Epomus beetles can be considered hereditary amphibian killers who begin their violent journey as larvae. Such a larva forces a frog to attack it, and when it attacks, it wounds it and damages its leg tendons so that the victim can't escape. Even if the amphibian manages to swallow a pumice, no good will come of it. The insect is not digested anyway, and in the end, the amphibian will have to spit it out. If the larva that attacked is in the early stages of development, the frog still has a chance to escape alive. If the larva that attacked is in the early stages of development, the frog still has a chance to escape alive. In this case, the insect behaves as an ectoparasite feeding on its body juices and may accidentally let go of its live meal. If the larva is in the middle of development or preparing to become an adult insect, it simply slowly chews up the tissues of its prey, leaving only bones from the toad. Charming animal life. By the way, remember the antlion from the beginning of the video? I also thought it looked like a sarlacc. Well, I was wrong. What really looks like a sarlacc is the predatory sea polychaete worm. It lives on the ocean floor at a depth of 10 to 40 meters, preferring tropical waters. As an adult, it's 2 to 3 meters long, but only its head, which has five antenna-like things, sticks out on the surface. The worm uses these antenna to detect any movement nearby and tracks its potential prey. When any fish gets too close, the monster grabs it with its powerful mouth. It does this with such speed and force that it can split a fish in half, and that frankly would be a merciful decision because the unfortunate survivor of the attack would learn what it's like to find herself in a worm's burrow. What exactly happens down there is still a mystery to scientists. Perhaps the monster injects its victim with some kind of paralyzing toxin to swallow it alive and then digest it. Creepy. But the sea worm has a rather cheerful coloring. Perhaps that's a little comforting to the victims. At least they've been eaten by someone classy. But if there's one insect that's really made me feel uncomfortable, it's the giant water bugs. Wow. Like, I'm not sure the snake can win this one, but this is horrifying. They're found all over the world and have a total of about 150 genera. The largest live in South America and can grow up to 10 to 15 centimeters. What's really frightening, though? Not their size or even the fact that we're talking about water bugs, which aren't pleasant creatures at all. These insects are insidious and skilled predators, hunting from ambush. Their thick, curved front legs with hooks on the ends are able to grab and hold quite a large prey. And it's not just about insects. Giant water bugs gladly hunt fish, frogs, and even snakes. They grab their prey, stick their sharp proboscis into it, and inject their saliva with a paralyzing effect into the body. It also contains digestive enzymes, which very quickly turn the victim's internal organs into a mushy mass. Yeah, kind of like a snake smoothie. All right, that's disgusting. But water bugs suck it up with an appetite. I really hope you weren't eating anything while you were watching. See you later.